What do your morning cup of tea and the metal recovery plants have in common? Not a whole lot is what you would hope. However, this is where you are mistaken. The simple act of steeping tea is, in fact, very similar to the process of leaching in metal recovery. Although you may be skeptical of my comparison, I assure you that I can explain what I mean. Leaching, sometimes known as digestion, by definition is the process of extracting a substance from a solid material after it has been in contact with a liquid. The substance being extracted from the solid does so by solubilizing. This process can be equated to the dark swirls you see starting to fill your cup as you pour hot water over the tea bag. As the water pours over the tea, the color and flavor come out of the tea leaves and into the solution. There are various methods for metal extraction or recovery, pyrometallurgy and hydrometallurgy being the most common. Pyrometallurgy involves smelting and refining the metal concentrate. Here at EMU, we favor hydrometallurgy because we extract metals from aqueous solutions. Our technology uses an electrolytic process called electrowinning to recover various metals from the solution. For us, the leaching step in the hydrometallurgic process is extremely important. By the way, we made a video about the basics of electrowinning. I believe a link in the description below. There are various leaching methods to get the target metals into the solution, which can be a more environmentally friendly method of extraction in comparison to pyrometallurgy. Depending on the desired metal, different solvents can be used in the leaching process. These solvents are known as leak CVNs. For those of you unfamiliar to the term, leak CVate means to leach or dissolve out. The leak CVNT is what leaches the metals out of the original matrix. Leak CVNs can be acidic or basic. Leak CVNs vary in terms of pH, redox potential, and or chelating agents, which can help increase the rate or selectivity of dissolution of the desired metal. In an ideal world, just the metal of interest will come into a solution when in contact with the leak CVNT, and then can be a lecture one after the step. However, this is often not the case. For example, sulfuric acid will leach most of the base metals from the solid matrix, and in some special cases, even some of the precious metals. Choosing a leak CVNT is important in order to leach the maximum amount of the desired product. But it is also important to evaluate what other metals will end up in the solution. In the process of electrowinning, metals are plated onto a cathode based on the relative reduction potential of each metal in the solution. The metal with the most positive reduction potential will plate out preferentially. Once that metal is depleted from the solution, the next most positive reduction potential will plate out. The electrochemical series dictates what metals will plate out of the solution and in what order. And if pretreatment is required after leaching in order to isolate the particular metal of interest, prior to electrowinning. Current density can be adjusted within the EMU cell to increase or decrease the rate of plating. In case you are interested in understanding the electrochemical series better, we made a video about this and I will leave the link in the description below. Leaching is the particular area of interest that I have been focusing on, as it is a very important step that must be completed prior to electrowinning. There are different types of leaching and the method chosen depends on the matrix of the starting material and the desired outcome. In vat leaching, also known as agitated tank leaching, the lixiviant comes into contact with the metal material in large vats or tanks, which can be stirred, enhancing the reaction kinetics. The metal containing solid, such as concentrate or residue or slag, often undergoes size reduction via crushing and grinding prior to leaching. One example of a leaching process that uses vat leaching is gold cyanidation, the process of extracting gold from low-grade ores. In this process, a dilute solution of sodium cyanide is used to leach the gold into the solution. The concentration is usually 0.01 to 0.05% cyanide or 100 to 500 parts per million. It should also be noted that the alkalinity of this solution must be high enough such that hydrogen cyanide is not produced, which is a very toxic gas. This is more important when sulfide minerals are in the ore because they may oxidize, consuming oxygen and generating acid. The pH can be kept above 10 by adding a base, such as lime, to the solution at a minimum concentration of 0.04% when sodium cyanide is 0.01%. Other additives include lead nitrate solution in order to minimize cyanide consumption in the reaction. Based on different variations of gold, cyanide leaching, and the starting material, different concentrations and ratios of the solvents and additives are used. 
In heap leaching, the ore is crushed, agglomerated, and charged to a heap in a containment area lined with an impervious layer. Lixiviant is then irrigated on top of the heap, diffused through the heap, and is eventually collected and pumped out for further processing. Usually, this method is used on low-grade ores that cannot be economically processed via other means. Heap leaching is successfully used to extract gold, silver, copper, nickel, and uranium. The largest heap leach for gold is the Yanacocha mine in Peru, second only to the Veladoro in Argentina. Heap leaching is used in tandem with electrowinning for copper extraction. Approximately 16% of the world's total copper production is extracted in this way. The Radomir Atomic Mine in Chile is a prime example of the success of copper heap leaching, followed by solvent extraction and electrowinning. Heap leaching technology is important to the future of metal recovery since it can be applied to extract precious and base metals sitting in abandoned tailings and or waste management sites. With emerging technologies and development requiring more of our natural resources, near 100% recovery becomes extremely important. During the in-situ leaching holes are drilled into the deposit in order to make pathways for the solution to penetrate. The lixiviant is then pumped into the deposit, making contact with the ore, and the resulting solution is then collected and processed. In autoclave leaching, higher temperature and pressure are used to enhance the rate of the reaction. This aggressive method of leaching is typically used for ores and concentrates that are not amenable to atmospheric leaching, such as sulfides. Each variation of leaching plays an important role in mining and metal recovery and is used in a variety of applications across the globe. Although you now see how the process of leaching is not that much different from what happens inside your tea mug, I hope that you can also see why leaching is such an important step in hydrometallurgical processing, and furthermore, what a significant part it plays in electrowinning. I hope this helped you understand the process of leaching in metallurgy. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more educational videos just like this.